Hi students and welcome to the lecture for chapter one and chapter two. Chapter one is entitled a rhetorical process for designing compositions. This will be an important slideshow for you to view because it'll kind of give you an overview of what we'll be doing throughout the semester and what will be expected um, in your writing and for the assignments that we complete. So to start off, we ask ourselves the question, what is rhetoric? Well, it's a method that helps you understand how communications work. A rhetorical approach offers you an organized approach for producing text as well as analyzing others' text. Um, throughout this PowerPoint, we will look at several of the parts of the rhetorical approach that you will be using. But again, it's just a way to understand how communication, such as writing, uh, works. Some of the things that are included in the rhetorical approach are what we call a statement of purpose, which includes the audience, the purpose, and the context, and a design plan which includes the strategies, the medium, and the arrangement. When we put both of those together, that is when you're able to create a composition. We will go through more explicitly and explain each one of these throughout this PowerPoint and the Chapter 3 PowerPoint. So what are the benefits of this rhetorical process? Why is it important to you as a student? Well, first, it helps strengthen your own communication by thinking about the different pieces of the process. So once you begin to analyze the different parts that go into making up a text, it will definitely help you as you are creating writing for this course and for other courses. The rhetorical process also gives you a purpose for your own writing. It really does help you to be more directed and focused on what you're trying to achieve with each piece of writing you complete. And finally, you'll be able to recognize the rhetorical elements in others' writing. One thing that a lot of students often tell me is that they struggle with comprehension while reading. Um, well, once you get a good handle on the rhetorical process, you'll be able to start to understand things that you're reading better because you'll be able to apply this process to what you're reading. One thing that we need to sort of talk through is the definition of an argument because throughout this course you will be making argument after argument in the papers that you are writing. Um, there are a couple definitions. So the first one, when people agree, when people under, I'm sorry, when people disagree, when people understand an issue differently because of differing experience is social positions, ways of identifying themselves, perspectives, beliefs, opinions, or values. The other one is when people agree to present their reasons for understanding issues or matters of concern as they do. So we're not looking at an argument as a typical argument where people are in each other's faces screaming things. But for this course, we're defining argument as a communication you hope will shape an audience's attention in particular ways. So instead of pushing your views down someone's throat, you're backing those up um, with support in hopes that the audience will pay attention and maybe you know, change their views. Some conditions that make arguments possible. Um, you have to have an audience to address in your writing. So that's one thing we will be working on consistently in this course is figuring out and determining who is the intended audience for your writing. You also have to make contact of some kind with the audience through spoken or written words or visual means. For the majority of this course, we'll be focusing on written words. That's how we will address our audience. You must have a sincere interest in gaining the adherence of the audience. So when you're writing, you actually have to want the audience to think about things the way that you're thinking about them. That is why it's, it'll be important in this course to pick topics that you're passionate about so that you will be able to have that um, sincere interest in persuading the audience. You also have to have a certain modesty about your beliefs, not holding them beyond question or discussion. So when we present an argument, we're not presenting it as the master um, enforcing our argument down people's throat. 
we're presenting what we believe in hopes that um, it'll spur discussion, um, but, but we're not holding on to our opinion as the only opinion that matters. And lastly, you need to be concerned about the audience and their state of mind. So again, thinking carefully about the audience and what you want them to get out of your piece of writing is going to be very important. Let's think about what are some things that catch our eye when we read. So what are things that appeal to us? What makes us change our opinions? Well, first, we have logical structures and evidence. So when we read things that are supported by facts, um, statistics, links to other sources, we're more likely to um, change our opinion versus when someone is just making statements without any support. Another thing that kind of catches our eye when we read is if we identify or connect with the text. Um, we make, evaluate, and are moved by arguments logically, but also by appeals to characteristics and qualities we share with others. So if you can connect with your audience in some way, that is definitely going to help you in your writing. Cultural knowledge is another thing that kind of appeals to us when we're reading. Because of where and when we grow up, we possess cultural and media references that we share either with everyone else in our culture or just with people close in age or interest. So appealing to that cultural knowledge. And then lastly, our bodily experiences, which is not exactly what probably what you're thinking. These bodily experiences are like visual elements. So thinking about how we're going to place things on the page. Do we need to include graphs or charts? Um, do you need to change the layout so that it can be more effective? Um, when we look at things that are appealing to us visually, um, we're more likely to read it and, and perhaps change our opinions. Chapter two, composing a statement of purpose. Um, this chapter is going to be especially important for an upcoming assignment that you will have. So make sure that you've read the chapter and that you um, are listening to this lecture with the intent of completing an assignment down the road. The first thing I wanna talk about is the writing process. I know you've probably all had different experiences with the writing process and explained you know, your process in writing. But for this course, we're gonna look at, first of all, figuring out the project. So that means creating that statement of purpose, um, considering and planning different approaches. So really understanding, you know, how we're going to present the, the text to our audience, writing a draft, getting feedback from the intended audience, and then re revising the draft after you gain that feedback. Um, while this process is outlined kind of linearly on this slide, it's not necessarily a linear process. You can go back and forth through any of those stages at any time. Perhaps you write a draft and then you get feedback um, and then you go back to that draft or you go back to your planning. It's not a linear process um, and the best writers don't do it in a linear fashion. All right, now getting down to some of the more important aspects. What is a statement of purpose? A statement of purpose helps you tie purposes, audiences, and context together, see how they interrelate, and suggest concrete choices for production. So this statement of purpose is kind of like an outline, helping you to evaluate how you're gonna put your paper or your piece of writing together. Let's talk first about purpose. The purpose of your writing uh, will tie together how you hope your audience will respond to your text with your reasons for composing. Some things to ask yourself when you're thinking about the purpose of your writing or, or why you're writing something. And what do you hope your audience will do or feel um, or think after having experienced the communication you will produce? What is your motivation in this communication situation? Were you spurred by something else that you read or a current event? Um, is there some event or situation that made you wanna communicate with others? Describe that situation. What would be the best possible outcome of the communication? So after folks read whatever you've written, what do you want them to do? Do you want their attitudes to change? Do you want them to physically do something different? 
And then what would be the worst possible outcome? If people read this and, the, and they don't agree with you, what are the ramifications of that? And then lastly, how will your communication change the situation in which you make the communication? Audience is another part of a statement of purpose. So audience is what matters about the people you address in terms of your purpose. Here are some things you can do to get a better idea of your audience. Generate a list of audience characteristics. So if we are writing something about um, recycling and we think our audience are people who typically recycle um, or people who don't recycle, what characteristics do those people have in common? Then you can imagine your audience members at the moment they encounter the communication you make. Are they going to be receptive? Are they not going to be receptive? You can go back after that and filter your list. So maybe you want to really focus on just people that don't recycle um, and you want to eliminate any other audience. That is totally up to you. There is a nice chart on page 42 in your textbook that also lists some um, good things to ask yourself as you're thinking about audience. The last piece that we'll touch on today is context. So the context is about the time and place of your communication. Is there a specific occasion that motivates the communication? Um, does the time, day, or year matter to your audience? So one thing to think about with that is with the election coming up, if you are focusing on something political in nature, definitely the, the year um, or the time of year that you send out a communication would matter. Um, and lastly, where is your audience going to read your communication? Is this something you'll be sending to them? Uh, will you be present reading this to them? Are you giving a speech? So those are all things to think about as you are preparing um, your statement of purpose. In chapter three, we'll be looking more into how we can combine that statement of purpose with some varying um, design elements to create a design plan.